Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Manchester City's Phil Foden, one of our own, has won the Premier League Young Player of the Year for the second year in a row. Two years in a row now for our little superstar, Philip Walter Foden. Unfortunately though, Kevin De Bruyne was robbed, in my personal opinion, uh, of the Player of the Year. Should have been him, but it wasn't. We'll talk about that and of course the PFA Team of the Year and all that kind of stuff and City's entries there in a minute. After, I've said, go and download One Football right now by clicking that link in the description or scanning that QR code next to my face. That is where I got the notifications about these awards that came through. I got the notifications on my phone. I've had it for like five years on my phone now. It's a fantastic app. It helps support my channel and you get all your transfer goodness and there's so much transfer news happening across the world of Manchester City and football in general right now that you'd be a fool to miss out on it all. So if you want all the information, all the stats, all the goals, all the breaking news, on your hand as it happens click that link or scan that QR code to get all the latest information it's a fantastic app I would not lie to you do it right now so we're going to talk about Phil Foden honestly I can't put into words how special this is an achievement Phil Foden what he's achieved already man I don't know how he does it of course uh, two years in a row now back to back I think he won the Premier League Premier League's own award two years in a row as well uh, for young player this guy just has that magic touch I don't even think it was his best season I think he was better last year and maybe there was some strong shouts to rival him but one thing I can't say, to say is that he hasn't been excellent at times when we needed him like he's played a sacrificial role this year Phil Foden he hasn't always maybe been the superstar of the team like he was at times last year when he played as a winger but one thing you can't deny is his commitment and his versatility and his essentially his ability to take one for the team like this season he was often as a false nine not his natural position by any stretch of the imagination but still he found a chance I think he scores about like nine goals in the Premier League this year with a further five assist or something like that in an unfamiliar role and uh, he worked really hard there of course every now and then he was in the wing as well um, but it was a tough role for anyone especially someone who's not used to it but still he was often there and essentially often the forward for the Premier League winning team which is really impressive given the fact he's only 21 years old he might be 22 now he's about to turn it either way but he was 21 all season of course I mean what he's achieved already in this game is the stuff of legends for this young lad. Like, he's four Premier League titles already. It's just remarkable. And then all these individual awards that he gets as well. There's something about Phil Foden that is genuinely magnetic. Like, you can tell that his peers love him. They know how good he can be. And you can't really ignore that, that seal of approval from, essentially, his contemporaries. Like, Phil Foden does seem to draw the eye from pundits and fans and players um, because he has a little bit of special to his game. And the best thing I can say about Phil is I don't think he's even really got close to exploding yet. I think he's going to go up another level. I do think Erling Carlin will take his game to another level entirely. And I think he probably knows that too. Phil himself was buzzing. He said, um, let me find the quotes from Phil Foden. He said, I'm really honoured to be honest, especially to win it back to back. It shows that I've come a long way this year with the consistency of my game and I'm really pleased to win it again. All the best players in the world have got to show consistency and keep performing at the high level. And this year I've just tried to do that and try and help my team as much as possible. I've been really happy with my performance this year. Hopefully I can win the main award in the future, but it's all about taking small steps and improving. I always love winning individual awards and it's just nice to look at and see how far you've come. So yep, I'm really pleased. He said, yeah not rip. Um, Cheeky Brigenstein was talking about him. He said, Phil helps embody the quality, drive, and determination of every single player here at Manchester City. He's a special player with a special talent, but one who always puts the team first and strives to be the best he can be every single day. And of course, as well, it's a huge accomplishment for our academy. Like, you got, you can't ignore that. I mean, people like McAtee and Palmer, they'll be seeing Phil Foden become a superstar, winning Young Players of the Year, winning uh, individual awards and all that kind of stuff, knowing that he's one of them too. And he came from that same path and he tr trod down those you know across that bridge like they did and all that kind of stuff so it means a lot it's symbolic it's impressive and a buzzing and it's Manchester City's trophy really I think we won four out of the last five uh, Sane and Sterling of course winning Young Player of the Year awards at one point and Phil got two now the guy is just absolutely uh, <laughs> addicted to individual awards now one thing I was gutted about is that Kevin De Bruyne didn't win Player of the Year. I, I'm not saying this is disparaged, Salah, but I genuinely think he deserved it. Now, if you don't know, they vote early. They vote with, some, with several games after the season, which to me seems really strange given it's the most crucial part of the season, the title running where, where you know, where legends are made and where heroes do what heroes do best. And unfortunately, Kevin De Bruyne's like, absolutely momentous performances towards the end of the season weren't really taken into account, which seems a bit of a shame. People can turn around and will say, well, he should have turned up earlier, but he literally got going in December after struggling with injuries. And Salah genuinely, and I'm not just saying this to be bitter, went quiet from January onwards. 
afterwards. He had a really quiet second half of the spell. And that is literally the business end of the season. That's not to disparage Salah's quality. Salah was obviously fantastic. And to get the leading goal scorer, joint with Son, of course, and be the top assister, that's phenomenal stats. And Salah is a phenomenal player. And there's no shame in losing it to him. And ultimately, I kind of must admit, you know, he probably deserves it in the way that De Bruyne deserves it too. I guess what I'm making, what I'm saying there is that if one of those two wins it, it's hard to argue against it. Though I do wish that Kevin De Bruyne was given the whole season to impress, not just half, not just three quarters of it. Because the, that last quarter was so fundamental to what made Kevin De Bruyne so powerful, so brilliant. Because when the tough get going, he really does get going. That's Kevin De Bruyne. He will drive you forward. He'll create moments of magic. And he leads the team in those absolutely immense moments. So he does feel like he's been robbed of three in a, year, three in a row. Because I do honestly, believe hand on heart can't prove it but it's my opinion that if they judge the whole season I think KDB would have won it and I can't prove that of course but it just feels that way to me um ultimately I guess it doesn't matter because you know <laughs> um Look what we've got. Look what we've got. We've got the Premier League title, you know, and that really meant a lot. I'm just reading some stats now about Foden, by the way. Four Premier Leagues, four League Cups, two Charity Shields, one FA Cup, two Premier League Young Player of the Seasons, uh, and then two PFA Young Player of the Seasons. <laughs> Did he win, like, the Golden Boy at 17 years old as well? Just remarkable. What remarkable talent. Um, as well, the team of the year. We had three entries in the team of the year. Joao Cancelo, Kevin De Bruyne, and Bernardo Silva. The team was mainly Liverpool. It was Alisson, Cancelo, Van Dijk, Rudiger, Alexander-Arnold, De Bruyne, Thiago, Bernardo, Salah, Ronaldo, and Mane. I mean, how did we win the league? It's a miracle that we managed to win the league despite six of the best players apparently being Liverpool's side. That's um, It's quite it's quite, quite impressive, that, isn't it, for C, you know? Little plucky old Man City fucking upsetting the underdogs there. Um, yeah, well, to me, I mean, largely a lot of those players probably deserve to be there. I would say Son probably over Marnie or Ronaldo. Son should be there in that forward line. I understand none of our forwards being there, maybe. Rodri's got to be in that. I'm sorry, Thiago. I think mean, he started 17 games in the Premier League or something like that. Rodri is the best defensive midfielder in the world. And the reason that we won the Premier League is probably because of that midfield. No midfield in the world gets near Manchester City's and I think that is an indisputable it's not a fact but it's a it's as close a fact as opinion can be like Rodri was the absolute bedrock of Manchester City's lead success and he should be there maybe he doesn't get the credit for some reason because he's not very good at his own personal PR but the one thing Rodri's got of course he's like the most I mean he's a ridiculous passer he wins so many deceptions he's a Warrior wins so many headers and he adds big moments as well the winner against Arsenal the thunder bastard against who was it was it was it Watford? I can't remember. I forgot who it was against because I'm tired. And of course, as well, the equaliser, the last day of the season, he scored so many goals. Have he got nine goals and assists in the, in the league this year, which is remarkable for a midfielder, for a defensive midfielder. So big moments, iconic moments, and consistently excellent performances. Rodri should absolutely be in that team. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, to me, it should be... I mean, there's maybe a shout for Laporte in there, potentially. Um of our forwards, I wouldn't say anyone had it. Mares is a decent show, but I understand that. I understand Allison, fair enough. Cancelo probably would be right. Van Dijk, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Rudiger, Rudiger's excellent. I can't really argue with that. Alexander Arnold's had a great season. KDB, obviously. Bernardo, obviously. Thiago, no, not for me. Um, Salah, yeah, obviously. Mane and Ronaldo, one of them should have been son. You choose between us. But overall, um, it's interesting to see, isn't it? Like, you know, Jorgen wins the manager of the year. Liverpool get six in there, but we won the league anyway. And that's pretty much all that matters. Um, I'm buzzing for Phil Foden. Devastated for KDB because I think he deserves it. But it's fascinating to see how this goes. Now, of course, we feast next year with Haaland there. Oh, I tell you what, he's going to be in that team next year. He's going to win the play of the year, I reckon. Put some money on that. I don't put money, don't, you know, you don't want to. But that's, it's a tempting offer, isn't it? Guys, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. The lives will be back next week, of course. Uh, and I'll catch you all that uh, all the for those for all the transfer gossip and all that kind of stuff i'm going away for the weekend for a stag do so hence why there's all these pre-recorded videos for now though like comment, subscribe big love come on phil